Hi, I'm Tom Murphy, and I'm going to talk today about population, which is not a subject I imagine I'll be getting into, but here I am. So we'll start with something that you've probably seen in some form, is that population is just rocketing up this century. We're over 8 billion now, and it really took off around 1950. The story behind that really is the Green Revolution and um, changing agriculture to be a very fossil fuel heavy enterprise from the fertilizer to planting and harvesting and processing and transporting food. And more food has made more people. It's given us the ability to um, sort of break free from, from uh, limits in a sense, but it's a temporary game. And the question is, where is this going? So the United Nations periodically puts out projections. This is from 2022, where they their standard run has us uh, peaking around 20. 86 at 10.4 billion. And they have a few variants around that, but nothing uh, extremely different. They're all basically the same thing. So I just assumed that that was, you know, reasonable. I didn't question that. It seemed like the trajectory we were on, etc. cetera. Um, but when I looked at this graph recently, this is the annual growth in population in percent per year. It was high around 2% in the 1960s, and it's had a, you know, rocky decline since then. There's a dip just after 2020 from COVID, but even before that, it was heading down pretty significantly. So if you ask the UN in their projection where things are going to go, it's this green dotted line, which is a pretty reasonable extension of the trend from the previous 60 years. So if that overall trend holds, yes, that's kind of where we're heading. But what I wanted to understand and looked at is the period just before 2020, before the um, pandemic was going down pretty steeply. If we just projected that, you'd hit zero around 2040. So when you hit zero population growth, that's the moment at which population peaks. So zero growth means you're at the top. Um, the UN model has it peaking out at 2086. So it could also go not just linearly, but quadratically because this thing is curving. It's changing fast. And that would hit zero growth in the 2030s. I'm not saying that this is right. This isn't the right way to do things. This isn't very sophisticated. Um, it's just projecting a trend line. So I wanted to dig into the details and understand what really goes into demographic uh, projections. And it's a lot, but I uh, tooled up a, a program to, to do a lot of the same kinds of things, but we have to understand the assumptions. Those are really, really important. And one of the guiding assumptions, so to do demographic projections, you need to understand two things, births and deaths. Okay, so let's look at the births. So the UN has this um, uh, plot or this data that I made the plot from, of the total fertility rate over time. So the fertility rate is effectively the number of uh, children that a woman is expected to have during their lifetime. And that can be, um, you know, as high as five, which it was in the 60s, but now it's converging to lower values near replacement and sometimes below replacement is 2.1 uh, babies per woman. What I want to point out about this that's really kind of fascinating is look at the kink at 2020. Prior to 2020, the entire world, every region is falling. And then something magic happens and it stops falling. That magic is that's where the model starts. That's where the projection starts. That's where the data ends, projection starts. So it's this discontinuity that I found a little bit worrying. Um, what's, what's behind that? Is that realistic? And so, you know, what it looks like the UN does is they say, well, things in the end ultimately will head toward this, uh, you know, attracted attractor like a magnet, um, maybe, but that's just, uh, there's a lot of assumption that goes into that. So that's one thing I wanted to, to look at. Now, the um, OECD uh, countries have also, you know, published their fertility rates, and it's a similar story where these countries are typically between one and two. So the blue thing in the blue bar is uh, below replacement. It's been fairly stable, but in the last few years, there's been a fairly sharp downwash, a, a drop universally. And that's what's 
reflected in the other plot I showed you. But one thing to take away from this is that between values of two and one and two, that's a you know a typical TFR rate for a lot of countries these days. Okay, so one thing I wanted to understand is how well have uh, the projections captured these downward trends? Do we understand those? Are those really incorporated in the model? And so the UN does projections every several years. And here's what these projections in starting in 2010 look like. So the United States saw fertility drop starting in about 2008 uh, until the present. And the 2010 model, the black dotted line on the top says, we think it's going to stabilize. Uh, two years later, 2012, the cyan line, we think it's going to stabilize. Uh, the next year is in 2015, 2017. We think it might actually recover and go up a little bit. 2019, we think it's going to go up and stabilize. In 2022, we think it's going to go up. But the real story is it's continued to go down. So Finland is a very similar story. It's been going down rather steeply, but the projections are night and day different from what's actually happened. So that's very important to realize that these projections aren't anticipating uh, these declines that we're seeing. Uh, same story in Korea, which is really low. The latest data point, the red point, is at 0.72. Uh, that's the lowest of all the countries. And the projections say, no, it should be recovering, but in fact, it keeps falling. Uh, China is a really fascinating case because they had a one-child policy from 1979 to 2015. Um, and it looks like sometime around 1990, it really plunged maybe better enforcement or something with this policy, but it was stubborn. It kind of hung out around 1.5 for, uh, for a long time until uh, after 2015, when they, uh, disbanded that policy, that's when the, uh, rate really started to, to plummet. So it, it acts like a cat. It doesn't do what you expect it to do or want it to do. And you tell it. Okay, now you don't have to do that. And of course, that's what it's going to do. Uh, it's pretty funny. Italy has a similar story. And these are just very representative that the declines are not really tracked by the UN projections. That's, I think, important to realize. Okay, so the next thing to look at is the survival rates in, in you know, the other end of the story of deaths. And so the UN has um, tracks things in five-year blocks. And so this is the age blocks. This is the chance of survival of uh, going from one age block to the next as a function of age uh, for three different times, 1950, the dashed line, 2023, the solid lines, and 2100, the dotted lines for males and females, blue and magenta. So um, what you see is a pushing out of age. So life expectancy increasing as we go forward, which, you know, has happened. But maybe the better way to look at this is in the survival rates as a function of time, as a function of year, for four different age groups that are selected at the top, 15 going to 20, uh, then 65 going to 70, then 85 to 90, and 95 to 100 as you go down on the plot. And the story is that things just basically keep getting better. And that has been the trend for the last, you know, uh, 70 years in this data series. So the conservative safe thing is to say, well, that's just going to keep going. Nobody objects to that idea. But we really don't know. Um, I mean, life expectancy in the U.S. has actually declined a bit in the last few years. So we don't know that it's monotonically going to increase. There are a lot of challenges out there. I mean, we've got this century is going to see a collision between growth and planetary limits. We've got resource issues, energy issues, climate change, ecological issues are, are huge. I mean, one to 2% per year annual decline of insects and birds. Uh, in my lifetime, the average decline in vertebrate populations is 70%. It's huge. It's enormous. And so we don't know that things are just going to keep doing the way that what they've done. That's a, a context that's uh, based on inheritance spending of one-time resources and uh, is grossly unsustainable. Um, so I allow that maybe things just stabilize at today's levels, maybe, but they could also decline a bit. I mean, that's a real possibility that I think should be entertained and understood. And so 
I do a couple things in my projections. So the first is that I look at the total fertility rate. And instead of having everything go towards some attractor um, in the future, I let the current trends continue. They're going down. Let them keep going down. But don't let them just keep go down forever. They'll stabilize somewhere. I don't pick the stabilizing point. I just say they're going down at this rate. Give them a decade or so to, to kind of flatten out. And I'll let them land where they will. And they land within that one to two range that's fairly typical of a lot of countries today. So is this real? No, none of these things are real. This is all fantasy, mine or the UN's fantasy, but uh, different assumptions and they lead to different consequences. I think this is plausible. Um, who am I to say that that it's not? The, the real world has really ignored projections for a long time. So uh, it's free to do that. Um, what do we get from this result? We get that, um, you know, and this is a sophisticated thing that um, tracks the age distributions regionally and their fertility rates regionally and their mortality rates and immigration. All these things are part of this model that I put together and I can reproduce the UN results when I use all their assumptions. So it seems to be working reasonably well. If I have my model for TFR and a declining uh, survival, which is the kind of earliest peak I can produce, it's even before 2040. Um, so I consider that to be possible. I mean, I'm not saying that this is the way things are or are going to be, but I, I don't know that we could really rule it out. What's fascinating to this uh, about this for me is it invites a lot of interesting conversations about what would a latter half of the 20th century look like in the context of declining population? Um, what happens to economies? What happens to uh, our sense of who we are and what this is all about and where we're heading? And that's a conversation I really would like to see happen. I think it's overdue. Um, I think a lot of things can change and maybe this is a good thing. Maybe a huge relief valve instead of a balloon that blows up until it pops. This is a balloon that never quite gets to that point and it just sort of deflates on its own and it takes a lot of pressure off the earth and ecosystems and the community of life. And um, maybe that leads to a better future. Um, so, that's the hope part, but really the, the main point here is that we don't really know what's going to happen. The projections that we see have a lot of assumptions behind them and, you know, maybe they're right, maybe they're not. Um, but I have been a little bit surprised at just how sensitive the, um, the projections are to, to real, um, phenomena, uh, that are happening that are seem to be outside the model and um, are changing things pretty quickly. So if you wanna see more about this, I've got a blog, Do the Math, that has a lot of detail and uh, projections and graphs and so forth. So check that out if you want, and that's it for now.